Hey guys, it is the awesome chat. We are back. We're trying something new here. We are uh, down in the lounge here at Work Hard Pittsburgh up in the Allentown neighborhood of Pittsburgh. And I got two guests with me right here, Nick Miller and Buzzy Torek. Hello. We, yes. Of course, Buzzy's been around on the shows before uh, talking about Epicast, talking about podcasting with us. But we're going to talk about a little broader uh, of what these guys are doing uh, kind of in general with uh, two businesses. There's no extra business you guys have started since since we booked this, right? Because it feels like you guys have a lot going on. I don't think so. <laughs> I hope not. Uh, but, of course, this is the Awesome Chat. You can check everything out at awesomecast.net. Subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker. Um, and uh, check out the video versions, of course, on YouTube and the Facebook page for Awesome Cast. And uh, there's also, if you dig this stuff, check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Uh, so let's get right into it. So, first of all, let's, let's just kind of uh, uh, break down what you guys are into um as, as buzzy's got the floaty mic going on over here <laughs> see this is the podcast professional in in action right here um but uh, of course epicast what is epicast for those who don't know uh basically i mean at this point we're kind of just like a digital content creation company um with a focus on podcasting so we do a lot um, and we're constantly trying to like narrow it down and focus it, but we never want to give up all the extra stuff that we do. Yeah, you you, you have a pretty good um, uh, presence online. I'm always impressed with it's, it's it's very visual for like you know most people are like, well, I'm doing podcasting. I'm in front of a microphone and everything, but you guys um, um, do a really good job about you know having that extra video content, image content. You know, I know of course you're a photographer, Buzzy, uh, so so you're delivering a lot of that stuff on top of it. Like, what's kind of your philosophy um, there? We just started, so like I uh, used to work at a photography studio when I was a kid and um, started taking photos, you know, again in college, like black and white photos and printing them. And then, um, you know, doing the podcast stuff, just having a camera was like a necessity to like capture what we were doing. And I got into it real quick and Nick picked it up in a week, like literally in a week he learned photography and um, we just kept taking photos with everything we were doing and uh um, have got better equipment and better cameras and that's we've been sticking to doing photos since and it's just you know I think uh, it doesn't take much to to learn like half decent photography and you know it's cool that we have like three or four people on the team now that that can do that and contribute so we have tons of photos we have thousands of photos that we'll we'll never see online that we take all the time but uh mm -hmm. yeah yeah, and uh, one of our, our big philosophies when we first started was let's try not to annoy people by posting the same thing over and over and over again. So we were just like, how do we create mm -hmm. as much content around one focus as possible? And photography was like a big thing that helped contribute to that. We could consistently release photos from one specific thing that we did, and it allowed us to continue to push that one thing. That's awesome. And of course, aside from that, you guys also have another business, uh, a brick and mortar business, actually. Uh, uh, tell me about Black Forge Coffee. Uh, Black Forge is the brainchild of uh, me and my best friend, Ashley. Buzzy's been there from the beginning. He basically helped us build it and do all the build out and everything for that. Um, but yeah, it's, just, it's a black metal coffee shop. You know, it's just kind of like been the aesthetic of everything that me and my business partner have been into. For the past couple of years, best and cold brew around. <laughs> best cold brew. <laughs> yeah, we we got real lucky. Zeke's made a custom blend for us, and that custom blend has just killed it. It's probably I mean, it's all that I drink for coffee as it is, and then the cold brew that it comes out of it's amazing. And uh, I mean, yeah, we partnered with a ton of local companies to do as much stuff as we can with them. Um, it's a lot easier to get a hold of a local company that is a national company. I've tried a few times just to get distribution for different products, and they don't even return emails. So, um, yeah, I mean, like, it's just basically we have that collector mentality that comes with being a metalhead when you want to buy the rare vinyl and get the rare, you know, tour T-shirts and posters that are not out for everybody. Um, we wanted, you know, we use that business model when it comes to our coffee shop, and, I mean, we only get maybe... 40 shirts printed at a time and they're gone within less than a month um and we're just constantly trying to push the envelope and put out new things that a typical coffee shop wouldn't do um i mean it's pretty fair to say that most people are aware of this at this point but i mean like in about a month or so we're going to be releasing a sega game that's actually coming out on a sega cartridge so uh, we're pretty excited about that 
Um, I've seen a bit of the artwork for that as it's been developing on, on, the, on the backside. And it's been like, I can't wait to play this game. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a lot of fun. They didn't deviate too far from um, the story that we came up on the back end. So that's that's really exciting. They didn't like try to like dull it down in any way. They're like, if that's what you want to do, we'll make it. <laughs> and uh, we actually we actually had um, the guy behind with 8-Bit Evolution on a, a few episodes ago on this program. And I know I talked with him. I, I believe I believe the, the story art is actually hand-drawn and then pixelated, he was telling me. That's incredible. Like, it's, it's, it's awesome. They do great stuff over there at 8-Bit Evolution. Yeah, 8-Bit I'm looking, kills it. I'm looking forward to see uh, what, what comes out with your stuff. And, and, and definitely looking at the decor. If you walk into uh, uh, Black Forge, uh, you, you know you've walked into something you know special. It's not just like okay, this is a oh, okay, it's another coffee shop, and I got to figure out the menu kind of thing. It's like oh, there's stuff to look at here. There's stuff going on here. Your your event board is is constantly filled, um, and uh, and it's two doors down from the from the from the from the cops. So you're you're like oh, I'm, I'm good, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. People aren't too scared. They're just annoyed that they can't find parking because of all the cops. Oh, it's tough. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I mean, our goal was to be as artist friendly as possible. Um, like I said, me and Ashley kind of came from that world. She was a lighting director and she worked at venues and toured with bands and all that stuff. And I mean, like I came from the music world as well. I've been a musician since I was 16 and playing shows and stuff. So I know what it's like to be underage and not have a venue to play at or having to sit in the kitchen and wait until it's time for your band to play. And then you can run up, jump on stage. And as soon as you're done, you got to leave. Um, I've been there so many times and I know that Pittsburgh has very few venues that allow that kind of stuff to happen and i also know what it's like to be a visual artist and to just be you know taken advantage of by so many places that want to like hang your artwork and sell it for you and they want to take a percentage and a hanging fee and i mean by the end of the day when you only sell one painting out of an entire showing you know and you're walking away with thirty dollars it's really disheartening for something that you put your life into so i mean we just try to like keep our rental costs as low as possible we try to hang as much artwork as we possibly can we try to i mean like you guys work. turn over art like monthly yeah we, uh, that's the main goal i mean like this past one we did um we had art up for about two weeks and then we had more art up in another two weeks um and then we have another one up in a month and then come december we have another 30 person art show uh, yeah, so <laughs> we try wow. to get as much artwork in there as we can. And I mean, in, in my opinion, I, I don't have to pay for decorations. So mm -hmm. people always think that, like, thank us. And I'm like, well, and I, I mean, like, in my opinion, we're taking advantage of you. So <laughs> thank <laughs> it's a you. It's <laughs> beneficial yeah, yeah, exactly. situation. Okay. <laughs> you know, but that's awesome. That's awesome. So, and, and I see, uh, you know, I've seen all the events and everything. I see there's a bit of a synergy, obviously, between the two, to do two ventures. Uh, uh, Epicast is very involved. In, in, in events and then you know you have now a space to kind of play in a little bit right yeah when they were doing the build out they consulted me for the audio uh the part so there's a board up there that we can literally just plug right into a laptop and it's 16 separate tracks so we can like full band you do a podcast first record like the podcast separate tracks and get a full band on there and multi-track the entire band wow. live if you have the mics which is awesome so we've so done that before too we've had you know um you know, bands come in and, and multi-track, multi-cam, you know, record them in that space, which is fun, which is cool because uh, not a lot of people know that that's, it's capable of that, which no, is another, no. you know. Yeah, we recorded a couple of live performances. Um, I think the goal right now is in the next six months to a year is we want to get that place fully live. Um, and by that, I mean, like, we want to be able to uh, use a couple room mics and go straight to YouTube. So any band that comes through there, we can stream it. Um, high quality, and they could walk away with a product on the internet. That's awesome. I, I remember back in the day, geez, was it like a, a Peabody's in Cleveland? They had that set up where you could walk away with like a DVD of the performance from the yeah. night and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I love that. It's kind of progressed to this point where you can just probably flip a switch and be be good to go, right? Yeah, the technology is getting crazy. I mean, it's so digital that I literally can plug into our board with my cell phone. So, like, if I'm running around serving people coffee and a band sounds terrible, I can fix it real fast. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible. That's incredible. So, so what's kind of the future for you guys? You know, what's going on with Epicast lately? Um, uh, you know, you guys are coming up with new shows, like, all the time. Uh, we got, what, four coming out in the next 30 days? Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot coming out soon, and we're actually really excited about all of them. Um, yeah. this it's going to be fun to like get these shows out there and see how people feel about them. They're, they're very much Pittsburgh or Pittsburgh and very much not Pittsburgh. So like they're, um, I mean like they're going to have a world perspective on them for, for some of them. I mean, a couple of them might take over radio. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. 
We're doing one called Pitchworks, which is going to focus on pitching your company, being in front of investors, and, and how to handle those types of conversations when you're super nervous and how to kind of sell your your ideas. Um, I actually got to speak with the, the host of that yeah, uh, a couple of weeks ago at our, at our coffee. It was really good to, mm-hmm. to talk with him. Yeah, so that, that one's spinning up, and um, that's coming along great. And then we have one called Teller Island Radio, um, and that's really cool. There's these guys um, called Speak Life Storytellers, and there's two dudes that come in here and improvise like every day for eight hours. And like at the end of the mm-hmm. day, they come out with, you know, maybe an hour plus worth of um, material every time they're in here. And um, I take the, that material. It's only two tracks. I use a loop pedal and just go into these weird, trippy type, like freestyle, like beatboxing type, you know, it, and the style of music is everything from like Indian to hip hop influence to, to it's just, it's to jazz to whatever. And the guy plays saxophone. They play uh flute they you know drums it, it's really cool and um so i've been working on that a ton we have um what else academy po- podcast i'm doing for josh across the street and um grown-up superhuman people podcast i think <laughs> and that's the guys i'm from Southside comics they're gonna do a, they're doing a comic book podcast and we're helping them out um like relaunch into itunes and um kind of strategizing that right now so yeah that's the four and those guys are really nice, and they do a lot of really interesting topics on uh, on their show. It's not just an average comic book show that's like, uh, hey, we read this comic. Let's all talk about it and tear it apart. Uh, they actually talk about a lot of like underground and, and smaller comics and things that you probably wouldn't – you'd probably glance right past if you were walking through the comic book store. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and then there's, there's a couple ideas that are floating around that we're, we're kind of excited, and we hope they come to fruition. Um, one of the guys from Does This Hold Up might be doing something new. Uh, mm-hmm. And anything that they touch is gold. So we're really excited and hope that that happens. <laughs> yeah, those guys are awesome. I'm, I'm glad they could figure out their tech to, to keep doing the show. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. It was a little weird at first, but they, they nailed it. They dialed it in. Yeah. Certainly. Yeah, you were responsible for that, right? I, yeah, I did uh, get the recommendation for Zencaster when I had to, um, somehow we had to do a podcast when I was in California and everybody was everywhere else. And I was like, okay, I'll supervise us Zen- and we'll try the Zencaster thing. <laughs> yeah, they, so. uh, they were like, thank God for Sorg. He told us about Zencaster. We wouldn't have been able to do the show if it wasn't for him. Yeah, I saw them at the comedy festival. That's what, it, it, it's a show that I, I love listening to and I, I, I didn't want to see it die. Um, and uh, I couldn't cover the spread on Patreon, but I'm glad somebody did to keep them going. So uh, that's awesome. I'm glad I could contribute to that and, and keep those guys alive. So um, and they're doing they're doing great things too. As far as like you know, of course they're doing our you know they just did our comedy fest. I think you know we talked about you know Black Forge is really into uh, 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 live events and everything. Um, what are you what are you kind of looking at as far as like podcasting live events? I know we've talked about it a little bit in the past, of course. Um, but, uh, you know, you, what's your kind of strategy getting podcasts out there in front of people physically? It's hard. It's, uh, <laughs> people in around here don't, at least, I don't know, it doesn't seem like a lot of people yeah. want to come out to podcasts. They don't know? really view it as like a live entertainment thing yet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, if you go to like LA and New York, it's such a consistent thing that people kind of have stumbled into it enough times to realize that it's, it's fun to go and see. Um, now, I mean, like it, no matter how much promotion you throw at it, it's, unless it's part of another event, it's really hard to get somebody to come out just specifically to see podcasting. So right now we're working on tricking people into watching podcasts live <laughs> and throwing it, <laughs> throwing it into like live events that they're already going to attend and then telling them that it's a live Q and a, that'll be released as a podcast and people wind up coming up to us after us like saying wow that was really fun that was really cool i want to come and see, see that again when are you guys doing it again which mm-hmm. so the trick is working <laughs> and i've noticed that a lot too i was i was just at a wrestling event this past weekend where uh the, the, the owner of the company there's like they did a they did a podcast episode there in the other room and you could go watch that mm-hmm. and i was like oh hey there's this podcast thing you know um or or you see them doing it at, at wizard world when they come in or a lot of these uh comic cons of course they'll do a recording um but uh but and also like i always battle with with my shows it's like you know obviously i think the show is very pittsburgh based and i think there's a little bit of legs with that but but then i look at the wrestling thing i'm like let's completely do a wrestling event here in pittsburgh and then i realize i look at my stats and like they're everywhere Mm -hmm. like my co-hosts are across the country so i i i I, I battle with that working locally on things and we try to do special things uh uh, we're trying to do a video game wrestling tournament here in in the near future um but it, it always seems like a you know well where are my people you know yeah so versus um i know i've seen a few go to places 
where you know there's a big wrestling show or something so a lot of people are coming in so there's all your audience right right comic-con of course so i think i think there's also a connection to a live recording too um if if somebody gets to sit in that audience even if they don't know what's happening later on when the audio comes out they're like oh i was there for that Mm -hmm. and they want to share it and tell their friends that they were a a part of it in a certain way um and yeah i just think that it's it's just like with comedy when we first started podcasting our main focus was with comedy podcasts and the comedy scene was i mean probably less than half of where it's at now um and it's just boom there's a there's one to two mics open mics every single night of the week now there's at least triple the amount of comedians that there was when we first started and stuff it's just a matter of like really just putting it in front of people's faces and forcing them to realize that it's something that they want to see um because they never really seeked it out before and there's a big comedy boom right now and the podcast wave is is really starting to hit i when i go to bars i hear people talk about like oh there's a really interesting interesting podcast that i listened to the other day and mm-hmm. it's actually a topic of conversation on a regular basis now so i think that once real people get past like npr is not the only one putting out podcasts mm-hmm. and they realize that there's people putting out like actual entertaining podcasts that are meant to be digested live and in, in a fun way and not just in a factual way that they'll start especially, picking up tickets especially locally yeah you know, exactly there's a ton of of home of content made in your backyard that you don't realize is out there i think people are slowly coming around to that so maybe we need an initiative uh where there's shop locally let's uh podcast locally yeah yeah you know right right For sure. listen so, to your local podcast i mean honestly like the, the local podcasts are you're gonna get way better like news and information out of them out of them and there's probably better researched mm-hmm. I, I mean that there there's people that we worked with that spend weeks researching one topic just to talk about it on the podcast because the last thing we want to do is be called out for being wrong <laughs> right right because the internet will obviously <laughs> let you know <laughs> yes uh, well that's great well so uh, um, uh, what's where can everybody find everything and everything coming up uh, epicast TV is pretty much our handle for Everything. If you want to get a hold of us, it's epicastnetwork at gmail.com. Epicastnetwork.com is a website. Lots of cool stuff going on there. We just recently ventured into doing a couple blogs. Um, so, yeah, keep a lookout for that kind of stuff. Um, Black Forge is Black Forge PGH on pretty much everything. Blackforgecoffee.com. Blackforgecoffee at gmail.com is our email as well if you want to get a hold of us. Nice. So. I don't have to say shit. <laughs> I don't have to say anything. That's fine. That's fine. Thank you so much, guys, for joining me uh, here on the Awesome Chat. Check out everything in this and more conversations over at awesomecast.net. We got a lot of uh, great conversations from other podcasters, other networks, and other sure. people doing businesses uh, around the area and abroad uh all, all over the place in other countries sometimes uh so go check it out thank you so much and uh we'll see you guys next time thank you to our awesome guests you've been an awesome audience have an awesome week bye guys <laughs>